Hey. Hey. Yeah. Listen, you know a lot about laptops, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome, because I really need a new one, you know, like not too expensive, but also not cheap, fast enough for like YouTube, Netflix, and a little bit of work stuff, and not too thick, uh, like really thin and nice looking, and with good battery life. All right, well, you could go with a Dell XPS 13 or 13 Plus, but don't get the i7-1280p version because the added performance just really isn't worth it. Or, well, maybe the regular XPS 13 might be the better option for you if you don't need, like, a ton of performance. Or you could go with something like the Asus ZenBook S13 OLED that Ryzen CPU and OLED screen will blow you away. Or maybe a ThinkPad. They look quite plain, but they get a lot of I.O. with, like, tons of ports and an amazing keyboard and trackpad and all of that. Or we recently just tested a MacBook X Pro, which was also really good, like, really fast, but it's kind of expensive. Um... Oh, you're one of those. Well... Just get a MacBook Air. Which one? The new one. There's just one. Just take it. Oh, okay. Awesome. Thank you. Hey folks, all jokes aside, this is the relatively new MacBook Air 2022. Sorry, we are a little bit late to the party with our review. And with its completely redesigned chassis and the second generation of Apple's in-house designed M2 chip, it's still one of the easiest recommendations in the Ultrabook category. And I have to admit that even though I'm usually more on the Windows side of things. Especially for non-tech people like your friends, girlfriends, parents and grandparents, Apple's streamlined product portfolio makes it very hard to get the wrong device. While we wouldn't say the all decked out version we have here in the studio is worth your family's hard earned cash, the entry level MacBook Air should be on everyone's shortlist when looking for a sleek, thin and light everyday machine. The new chassis looks and feels like every other device that is designed in Cupertino, inherently premium. Everything from the used materials to the perfectly tuned hinge to the braided power cable makes interacting with the MacBook Air an almost luxurious experience. While Apple was spearheading the movement for ever thinner and smaller devices, the competition has caught up and even surpassed the Air in recent years. Both the Dell XPS 13 and ASUS ZenBook S13 OLED are noticeably smaller. If that makes a difference in everyday use, you have to decide for yourself, especially since weight and thickness, or rather thinness, is on par with the competition. In terms of I.O., MagSafe is back and frees up one of the two USB-C ports that would have otherwise been on charging duties, like on the Dell XPS 13 for example. And thankfully, Apple is still keeping the 3.5mm headphone jack alive as well. While the two USB-C ports support Thunderbolt 3, the Air, or rather the M2 SoC, is still limited to one external screen running at up to 6K at 60Hz. For a new device that will have to rely on a wireless connection for most of its life, wireless communication performance is a bit of a letdown, especially considering the price point of the Air. While it will probably hardly make a difference outside of larger downloads, high-res streams or cloud gaming for example, some of the competing products offer almost twice the transfer rates. The camera and mic quality is pretty decent though and should be more than adequate for your next video call with your friends or family or your next office Zoom calls. In terms of maintenance, the Air is a classic Apple device, meaning that it is both very difficult to open the button panel and absolutely pointless since there is nothing to do in there. For a small notebook, we at least expect to upgrade or repair the SSD or the Wi-Fi card, with bonus points for the memory, even though this is a rare find even in the Windows world. While the keyboard does not offer a lot of travel, it still feels really good. While the stroke is quite shallow due to the slim chassis, it still feels very precise and should make your fingers feel right at home after a few minutes. The trackpad is still one of the best in the mobile segment and is well integrated within macOS. That said, the competition has caught up within the last few years, so the difference isn't as night and day as it once was. The Air offers a 16x10 QHD display with a few extra pixels on both sides of the notch. While there was a lot of controversy following that particular design choice, I got used to it really quickly and it never bothered me personally. The subjective quality is really good and while the contrast is quite average for an IPS panel, the glossy finish really helps your content to pop off the screen. 
While the MacBook Pros or OLED equipped competition offers a bit more eye candy, the Air has the edge regarding the absence of PWM flickering, which should be a godsend for sensitive users in this regard. The display covers almost 100% for both sRGB and DCI-P3, and a respectable 88% for Adobe RGB. Only the ZenBook S13 OLED can deliver better numbers, but that should only be relevant for creators looking for the best color reproduction. Not that the Air isn't interesting for creators like designers or photographers. Color accuracy is already really good out of the box and can be further improved with manual calibration. While we talked about how easy it is to recommend the Air, this comes down to the CPU's lack of options. While some Windows machines like Dell's XPS 13 can be specced with a plethora of vastly different CPUs, the Air is only available with Apple's own M2. It offers 4 performance and 4 efficiency cores, but 2 GPU options with either 8 or 10 cores. While the architecture is unchanged compared to the old M1, Apple increased core clocks across the board to boost performance. Considering that the Air runs completely passive, performance is really impressive. But naturally, the CPU has to throttle to prevent cooking itself. Both the latest AMD and Intel chips offer more performance across the board, with Intel favoring shorter, bursty multi-core loads, and the Ryzen 7 6800U in the ZenBook S13 is the king for sustained loads with absolutely stable performance. In the single-core department the Air can hold its own though, and has to play second fiddle only to the fastest i7 CPU from Intel's Alder Lake P lineup. Apple fans often like to put the performance into perspective of efficiency, and while this holds true, especially in single core loads, the increased core clocks compared to last year's M1 and the advancements especially for AMD's Ryzen CPUs close the gap slightly. That said, Intel's performance at all costs approach becomes apparent with sometimes twice as much power draw compared to the M2 chips. Benchmarks aside, the Air offers amazing system performance for such a thin and passively cool device. The OS is very responsive and even more complex apps like Photoshop or Resolve offer a performance experience that doesn't really fit this small and thin notebook. Drive performance during regular use shouldn't bother anyone, but our benchmarks show that the SSDs used by Apple offer significantly lower transfer rates than the latest Ultrabooks from the competition. If you plan to use storage or memory intensive apps, you should stay away from the 256 gig models. But those shouldn't be offered in 2022 anymore anyways. For more info about our tests and benchmarks and the detailed results, please head over to our website to read our written review. In terms of GPU performance during synthetic tests, Apple shows the competition where it's at for integrated GPUs. Both Intel's latest XE graphics as well as AMD's 680M get demolished during the 3D Mark Wildlife test. In Geekbench using OpenCL, however, AMD is sitting above the M2, while Intel is still far off by quite a significant margin. That said, apart from natively GPU accelerated apps, it is performance you unfortunately cannot access for gaming, since there simply aren't a lot of games to enjoy on macOS. So do not expect this one to be a next silent gaming buddy. If you want to find out more about the MacBook Air's performance behavior during short and extended loads, head over to our written review. My colleague Andreas spent a ton of time putting the silent laptop through its paces and tested a ton of different benchmarks and stress tests. So please give his original article a read. In terms of battery life, Apple is basically competing only with itself, since both AMD and Intel equipped laptops sometimes struggle to even reach half of the runtime we get from Apple's latest devices. The Air got around 15 hours for both our Wi-Fi test as well as our video playback test, which is simply impressive. Alright folks, let's wrap it up. While the Air actually comes with some very annoying shortcomings, like the mediocre Wi-Fi performance, throttling under prolonged load, slow drives and the higher cost of entry, we cannot deny that Apple once more put together a very compelling product. And given that the mentioned cons probably won't be a downside in everyday use, most of the potential customers will most likely not experience the negative side effects or simply won't care. While we cannot really recommend the entry-level Air and think you should at least upgrade to the faster and generally more usable 512GB SSD, we also wouldn't get detect our 10-core GPU variant. 
It costs almost as much as a MacBook Pro 14. And that one is much more powerful, offers a better screen and faster drives, albeit with a slightly thicker chassis. In the end, the new Air is a slim and sexy machine for your everyday tech lifestyle needs and can even deliver to some extent for power users as well that need a fast and silent machine. That would be it for today. Thanks a ton for watching. Please consider liking the video if you felt entertained and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest notebook tech. My name is Alex, you have been amazing and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.